This week, I fly on a plane that's just three years old, yet it will be retired next year as I take a trip across Kazakhstan. Welcome to beautiful Almaty in Kazakhstan, and I'm off to the airport today because I'm taking on a ride on a plane it's not going to be here for much longer, which is weird because it's only like three years old. Um, but let's get to the airport and I'll explain all about it. Harry, uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, to you. Thank you. Too. First things first, though, I had to take a drive out to Almaty Airport, which is about an hour long drive from downtown Almaty. A few years ago, Air Astana bought some brand new Embraer E190 E2s. They're like a regional jet with about 100 seats in them. Four years on, they're starting to get rid of them. As of next year, they'll all be gone. So I'm on a mission to fly with one today before they all disappear and it's another plane that we can't fly on. So um, let's head into the terminal and take a little ride across Kazakhstan. I headed inside to check in, which for a domestic flight in Kazakhstan is pretty straightforward. Hey. Good morning, how are you? Thank you, checking in for Astana, please. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, you Check-in complete, it was time to head through security and get through to the departure lounge. Uh, can I uh, a co coffee as well? Uh, black, black coffee, Americano, Americano, yes. A uh, grande, yes. Thank you. Spasiba. Do here airside at Almaty if you're flying domestic. Literally, there's a security check and then you're at the gate. But I have found a secret Starbucks downstairs. You have to take the lift downstairs, and there's like a little gate area. It's really quiet, and you can sit down here and um, just chill with your Starbucks waiting for the plane. And then when it's time to go, I'll go back upstairs. Um, when it's time to board. So we're taking a flight today to Astana in the north of Kazakhstan today um, on the E190 E2. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I'm looking, looking forward to it. It's gonna be a good day. Once I'd finished my coffee, it was time to head back upstairs again and start getting ready for my flight. And upstairs, it was absolute chaos as once again there were three flights leaving at the same time from Almaty Airport. Somehow I managed to get the right plane though and after battling through the crowds I ended up going down the jet bridge and getting on board my flight up to Astana. Air Astana's Embraer 190E2 plane is in a 2-2 configuration through the entire aircraft and the first few rows are in a premium economy config, the only regional jet that actually has premium economy. Hi then, welcome aboard the Aerostarna Embraer E190 E2. That's what it is. A plane that's not long for this world. They've only got like four or five of these. These are like a regional jet. Most of Aerostarna's fleet are A320s, like the one that was on the gate next to which you can't quite see it. But they've got the A320s um, at the moment, which are the main backbone of their fleet, really, for short haul. Then they've got the 767s, which are soon to be replaced with the um, 787s when they get those as well. Um, but these E190s are sort of an odd fit in the fleet because they're a regional jet and most of Aeroston is flying is done with A320s, A321s, um, Neos and stuff like that. So yeah, it's interesting, they don't actually um, have that many of these and with all the problems that they've been having with them, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, that they're um, effectively getting rid of them all next year, um, which is a bit sad really it's quite a nice plane this is only my second e190 e2 that i've been on the first one was with vidaro in norway uh, a few years ago now that was not a very pleasant experience very tight very cramped this is quite nice i'm up here this is premium economy this is one of the only regional jets in the world that has premium economy and the leg room is um, not too bad we've got power and usb down here which is quite handy um, tray table and the like just here and then a beautiful massive E190 E2 engine to look at just outside the window and you get cushions and stuff as well you can see there's cushion and a bottle of water on the seat here um, for this sort of two hour run up to um, Astana so um, yeah that's um, get on our way across Kazakhstan before we pushed back from the gate the crew came around handing out some pre-takeoff drinks which was a pretty nice touch they also handed out a menu for the flight, which for a flight on board a regional jet, I was really surprised by. The options today were a chicken breast dish or a salad, and of course I ended up going for the chicken. Before too long, we were pushing back from the gate and getting on our way for our flight across Kazakhstan to Astana.
As we push back, we did get a great view of the new international terminal expansion that's currently being built at Almaty. That's going to make a real difference to this airport, which can be absolute chaos when it gets busy. We taxied out past this Fly Aristan plane. Fly Aristan is Aristana's low cost arm that they started in 2019. But before long, we were lining up on the runway and getting on our way for our flight up to Astana. And I do like the sound that the Embraer E190 E2's engines make. It's a bit like a whale sound. It's pretty soothing to the ear. And the climb out from Almaty is always absolutely beautiful as you get to see all the mountains just to the south of the city as you take off from the airport. Our flight up to Almaty today took us northwest out of Almaty, crossing Lake Balkash and flying up to Astana, cruising at 28,000 feet, with a flight time today of 1 hour and 31 minutes. The E190 E2 was first delivered in 2016 and Air Astana took delivery of theirs in 2018. But just a few years later, Air Astana are about to retire them all. The E190 E2 is the smallest plane in Air Astana's fleet, seating just 108 passengers. It's the only plane Air Astana operates that doesn't have a full business class, just premium economy. In early 2021, they grounded their Embraer fleet, claiming that the E2 wasn't airworthy and that Embraer had hidden the deficiencies in the aircraft. They sued Embraer for $12 million, reporting defects including failures in the anti-icing systems on the wings. In July, they announced they were retiring the E190 E2s from next year, 2024, focusing on an all Airbus and Boeing fleet. In an interview with aviation news website Simple Flying, Aristana's CEO Peter Foster quoted, We no longer need the E2, we got the E2s before we got the low cost airline. Then we realised you don't have to go into a small market with a regional jet, you could just go in with an A320 with 180 seats and just price it accordingly. So that really is the reason why we're getting rid of the E2s. Once the E190s are retired, Aristana will fly a two-type fleet, the Airbus A320 series and the Boeing 787. So then Aristana have five of these Embraer E190 E2s. They started having them delivered about three or four years ago. They've had quite a few issues with them though. Um, they had quite a few technical problems with like the software on them and stuff like that that resulted in them grounding them for a period of time and they ended up actually taking Embraer to court over all the issues that they had with them. Um, and now they're in a position where they've got all of these A320s and A321neos and stuff like that that they're using for their domestic flying and they've decided that effectively these regional jets are just kind of an extra sort of loop in the chain that they don't really need here at Air Astana. They've figured out that for the lighter routes that they do across Kazakhstan, the A320s work just fine. They just need to make them a bit more expensive so they'll be able to afford to um, run it effectively. Um, and that's the strategy that they've decided they're going to go with. So these E190s next year are going to go and they're just going to be running all Airbus um, with Boeing for the long haul stuff. Which makes sense, really. Um, Air Astana, by the way, lovely airline. Honestly, one of my favourite airlines in the world. This is an Embraer regional jet that in most parts of the world you might just get really tight seats and stuff. The fact that we've got all this leg room here, I mean, and I'm kind of, I can stretch out quite nicely there. Well, back under the seat in front of me, that's why my foot's not there, but you've got plenty of leg room to stretch out. It's comfortable. Aerostana service is just some of the best in the world as well. Um, we've got a menu on this flight. We're going to get a cooked meal today on a regional flight across Kazakhstan. Like, that's something unheard of in other parts of the world. And yeah, here, yeah, nice cooked meal on board. No big deal. But they're working on already because clearly quite a short flight. So, um, yeah. Just enjoying sitting here at the minute looking at this beautiful scenery now as we climb out over. Kazakhstan.
Now they say that AI is the future and for sure it's changing the world, but using it for travel can be a little bit hit and miss. And as someone who's tried using it for travel, well, I can confirm that most of the time it can be, well, pretty rubbish really. But one website trying to change this is Magic Travel, who have developed an entire AI engine specifically dedicated to travel. Using their website, you can use it to find hotels matching your criteria, find attractions, or even plan an entire trip. Let's ask it to find us a hotel within a mile of Astana's railway station that we can stay in when we arrive into Astana. Once you've found your hotel, you can ask it to plan an entire trip for you and give suggestions of things to do. It looks at what there is to do wherever you want to travel and plans an itinerary accordingly. This is seriously cool technology and I've been using it for a while now. I find it really easy to use and pretty intuitive, which is more than you can say for a lot of AI sites. The best thing about Magic is it's completely free. There's no upgrades or extra fees for booking hotels. Plus, with Magic Elixir and Magic's reward program, you can find deals from 5 to 40% off your hotels that don't exist anywhere else. A hot town, hour and a half flight. Take notes, all Nippon Airways. This is how you do it. It wasn't too long before the cabin crew started coming round with the lunch service for today's flight. Right, so remember, this is a regional jet flight here in Kazakhstan. This is the meal that we've just been served. It's a less than two hour flight today. We've gone, I've gone for the um, grilled chicken breast today. We've got dessert, salad, and they've got a full bar service on board as well. I'm just having a coffee because it's still quite early, but it's, um, it's pretty nice, so let's get tucked in. Lake Balkash and continued heading north, it wasn't too long before we started our descent over the beautiful scenery of Kazakhstan for our arrival into Astana. Alright then we are descending into Astana, we should be on the ground very shortly. Astana was originally called Astana before they renamed it to Nur Sultan after the previous president of Kazakhstan, but then they've since renamed it back to Astana again. I think the city has a bit of an identity crisis. Anyway, whatever it's called this week, we started our descent down into Astana's International Airport where we landed right on time. up to Astana today cost me 176 US dollars or around about 140 British pounds working out to a cost of 30 cents per mile which for a flight with the quality of service that we had on this route was not bad value at all I'd say. I'd like to say thank you to my amazing patrons for their ongoing support. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, regular Zoom calls with me and much more. The airport at Astana is really modern and bright inside. It's quite a nice place to spend a bit of time before you head outside. Right, and welcome to Astana, Nazarbayev International Airport. Just waiting for me Yandex to turn up. It's going to take me into town. So, um, yeah, let's get out of here. It took about half an hour to get from Astana Airport into downtown Astana, where it was time to start my next adventure. The drive into Astana was pretty cool though as we went past some really nice monuments and buildings as we headed towards the downtown area. I thought this mural on the side of a building was pretty cool as well, celebrating the Baikonur Space Centre which is somewhere in Kazakhstan as well. Hello, welcome to Astana, formerly known as Nurs, well formerly known as Astana, then known as Nur Sultan and then back to Astana again. 
Um, I don't know. They, the council must be really busy. They keep changing the um, road signs. That's the only thing I can think of. But um, anyway, we are here in Astana, Kazakhstan, after my little ride with Air Astana on the E190 E2. And um, yeah, it's a shame they're not going to be around much longer. But let me know what you thought to the E2 down in the comments below um, and if you've ridden on one let me know what you think to them as well there's, there's not that many airlines that fly them around the world so it's nice to hear what other people think of them as well in the meantime well um, I'm here at Astana railway station because the next video is going to be something super cool so make sure you stay tuned hit subscribe so you don't miss it and I'll see you next time thanks very much for watching bye for now